Hi, my name is Sarah Morris and I'm a local Las Vegas estate planning attorney. Today I'm joined by Leah Gutierrez and we're going to talk to you about powers of attorney over health care. Today we're going to be talking about power of attorney over health care. This is a document that essentially you nominate someone to be your health care agent and then you give them guidelines to use in the event you're incapacitated so they know what you want to happen. Uh, this document, like I said, is part of an estate plan, no matter what kind of estate plan you have, with our office anyway. And when we get to this document in the estate planning process, there's generally a conversation that occurs. And a lot of times what happens is people don't understand the importance and significance of this document. Uh, in fact, Leah just had a conversation last night with her husband about it, and that's why this came up, and we thought it was appropriate to talk about in this video. What happened last night, Leah? So if I didn't have unlimited access to you, I would have set up a consultation with you to talk about this, because uh, my husband and I were, were just chatting and passing a, a pretty casual conversation um, where I mentioned to him, if I were ever incapacitated, I don't want to be kept alive. By artificial means um, and it got me thinking a little bit um, you know if that were to happen to me at this point where we don't have anything in writing or anything like that what what are some of the issues that may come up right and that's a great question and it does come up a lot because people think if you just verbally tell someone what you want to happen in the event you can't make your own decision then that's good enough there's a lot of problems with that. One, it depends on who you're trying to get to make the decision. If they don't legally have a right, now your spouse does have a legal right, um, then we have a problem already uh, because they're not going to have any say in what happens. That's number one. Number two, even if it's a person that has a legal right to make a decision like your spouse, um, can he really do that? Are you? Is he really going to be able to make that decision when the time comes emotionally? Like emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where this document comes into play because you are literally giving him parameters and guidelines to follow in the event you can't make your own decision. So he should be more comfortable in making that decision for you. Uh, number three, the other thing that's a major issue is if you don't, if you have, if you have someone that wants to do something like pull the plug because you're in a vegetative state, but they don't have power of attorney, then what if another family member disagrees with them? Then we have a conflict and there's problems and that's where you see, and I don't know if you guys have seen on the news, it has happened, um, where people have to go to court. Family members disagree over whether to keep someone alive and they actually have to go to court for it. They have to go to court to stop the person from being um, taken off life support if that's the issue or they go to court because they want to take the person off life support so this document really helps uh, because one it nominates someone to make that decision for you two you provide the guidelines and you're basically decide telling them what decision you want made and hopefully you're going to be avoiding court so it's a very important document and it's a very important part of anyone's estate plan so whenever you're talking about estate planning this document is absolutely part of it because there's, you know, estate plans, people always think just, oh, it's when I die, it's when I die. It's not just when I die, it's if you are incapacitated and can't make your own decisions, then you've got something in place to, to nominate someone to make those for you. So, and hopefully makes it a little bit easier. Right. For the loved ones that you're leaving behind. Yeah. Right? And that's basically, you know, a lot of people do estate planning for that exact reason. They want to make it easier on the people they leave behind. Or even if they're not gone, they want to make it easier for those people to make the decisions they need to make. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. If you want to talk more about estate planning or powers of attorney over health care, feel free to give our office a call and we can set you up with a complimentary phone consult or you can just go to our website and schedule one yourself through the website.